What's up YouTube, JP here, and today we're going to modify this GameCube with a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now essentially what this is going to allow us to do is use the Raspberry Pi Pico as kind of like a mod chip to trick the GameCube into booting from an SD card. That way we can run all our ISO files from the same SD card. But before we jump into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out and thanks to my channel members for their continued support. And just to remind you, if you need any help or have any questions on any of the projects that I cover, you can join the official Alien Retro Gaming Discord server by clicking on the link that's in the description of every video. Right, on with the video. So let's go over what you're going to need. And of course, you're going to need a GameCube with its cables and at least one controller you're also going to need a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now I'll put Amazon links in the description for your convenience. Next, we're going to need one of these little expansion cards. Now this plugs in underneath the GameCube in one of the expansion ports and allows you to plug in an SD card. You'll also need an SD card. How big depends on how many games you want to put on it. Right, let's jump over to the PC and get things set up. So the first thing you want to do is Google Pico Boot. Now the first result should be a link to a GitHub page. Here you'll find all the information about Pico Boot, including instructions, diagrams, and all the files you need to download. Scroll down to section two where it says flashing the Raspberry Pi Pico board and download the latest version of Pico Boot. It's the top one with the extension UF2. Now you're gonna go back and we're gonna download the latest version of the Swift software. And at the time of recording this video, it's 13.36. So now back on the desktop, we have the UF2 file for the Raspberry Pi Pico, and I've also extracted the Swiss software ready to copy over to the SD card. So we need to prepare the SD card, and it's as simple as formatting it to XFAT. And you can name this SD card anything you like. I've just gone for GameCube. Now we have a freshly formatted SD card, we're going to copy over the Swiss folder onto the root of the card. Next, you need to go into the Swiss folder, go into the DOL folder, grab this DOL file, cut it and put it in the root of the SD card. This is like the boot image, so when you start the GameCube, it boots from this file. And one last thing we need to do here is change the name of the file to IPL.DOL. So to get the image on the Raspberry Pi Pico, what you'll need to do is hold the boot button and plug it into the computer. As soon as you do that, you'll see it open up like a mass storage device. Drag and drop the UF2 file onto the device. And then once it's finished copying across, it will disappear. And that is the Pico setup for Pico Boot. So also on the GitHub page for Pico Boot, you'll see this diagram explaining what wires go where. So it's time to disassemble the GameCube. Now, I'm not gonna go through everything here, so I'm gonna speed up the video. There's loads of tutorials online already explaining how you take the GameCube apart. So now we've got the GameCube apart down to the bare motherboard and here we have the Raspberry Pi Pico. What we're going to do is solder some wires to the Pico and then solder those wires to the motherboard.
So now we've done all that, we can put the console back together. I won't bore you with another time lapse. And the very last step is to remove this expansion port and connect the SD card reader. Now it's important to note that this card reader will go in both ways, but it's clearly marked this side inside and this side outside, referring to inside the console and outside. I also forgot to mention that I placed all my GameCube ISOs on the root of the SD card. So turning the console on without any games in it, you'll be greeted with this screen. And as you can see, all the games that are put onto the SD card are showing up here. Now, unfortunately, my cheap RCA to HDMI converter worked fine in the menus, but as soon as you launch the game, well, look, it's terrible. So what I had to do is connect my GameCube to the TV and then use my camera to just record the screen. And as you can see here, the GameCube's working perfectly. We're playing Mario Kart Double Dash from that SD card. And to be honest with you, it runs just as if you were running the game from disc. I also played a little bit of Paper Mario. Why not? So I'm going to end the video here. If you enjoy my content, please like, subscribe and consider joining by becoming a member. And if you need any help with any of the projects, please join the Discord server. The link to join is in the description of every video. Right, I'm JP, you've been watching Alien Retro Gaming, and I'll catch you in the next one.